Hello and welcome to a series I'm going to be calling Godot Tutor Blitz. We're going to be covering everything you need to know about Godot as quick as humanly possible. So let's go ahead and get into it. Today our topics are Light 2D and Shadows. So let's go ahead and get started by creating us a Light Node. We're going to go ahead and start a brand new node, a new resource, and we're going to make it a light 2D. We're going to call this light 2D blitz light. Bada bing. And the first thing you want to go ahead and do with your light 2D is go ahead and load up a texture for it. Um, texture is important to note. It's going to be helpful if they are in resolutions that are powers of two and they are mixed down to black and white 8 bit only. Um, you can go, you don't have to do 8 bits, but black and white, make sure it's in a black and white color space. Otherwise, you will be wasting your performance. Ideally, you do not want to use color in the, the texture itself. You do want to apply color in the engine, which I will demonstrate how to do here shortly. So we're going to go ahead and load up a iGlow 64, which is a 64 by 64 bit texture that I created in GIMP. You can find a live stream where I explain uh, that later on um however right now that's not our concern so we have our light 2d we have our texture node now there's multiple things you can do you can uh, go ahead and set your texture scale unlike your typical um, nodes which you scale with your transform you're going to want to use your texture scale for the most part to adjust your light 2d nodes um, mode you have add subtract mix and mask and anybody familiar with photography will understand how this works to explain these right now is going to be beyond the scope of what we're doing here, but I will include this in an advanced light tutorial later on. Um, range. So range is very important. You have your uh, Z min and Z max. As your nodes load, they will be layered and they will be assigned a Z index. It's basically what part of the stack they're on. Um, if you imagine all of your images or all of your sprites on screen, like stacked on top of each other, the higher uh, Z values will be on top and the lowers will be on bottom. So what this is basically saying is that this light 2D will affect the 1024 layers above it and the 1024 layers below it. And you can adjust that um, if you need to. Tinkering with that will be useful when setting up advanced lighting. Okay, so now we have our layer min and our layer max. So if you do set up a GUI layer and such, um, you can manipulate that here. So you can have it only affect like a GUI layer or, or only affect the actual playing field. Um, and finally, under this section, you have your item coal mass. This is the most important. So this is what is actually going to be illuminated by your light 2D. And just for quick reference, we're going to go ahead and create a sprite so that we have something to demonstrate the effect of this light 2D on. Now, this light currently is affecting only things in the environment layer. Um, so everything by default is going to be uh, set to that first layer whatever you have it named in my game i have it named the environment layer now we can manipulate this by changing either the sprites visibility layer if we take it out of the environment it is no longer illuminated by that light 2d or we could also and or take it out here and this is how you're going to control what all um, gets affected by your lighting whether you want a particular glow or shine from something just to like illuminate and uh, make something more poppy or if you actually want it to affect things around it and such. Carrying on, one of the most important things and most confusing things is going to be your shadows. Um, by disabling shadows you don't have to uh, do anything here, but however, by flipping that switch on, now you're getting shadows. So very important things to note here is going to be your buffer size. The higher your buffer size, the cleaner looking your shadow is going to be generally. So you increase your buffer size, you're going to get a decreased performance, but a cleaner looking shadow. Your gradient length is also going to smooth out your shadow. The lower the gradient length, the more instantly it'll turn from light to dark or from uh, solid to transparent. The higher your gradient length, the more pixels that it takes to go from a solid to a transparent when something is blocked by a shadow. So this is how you create basically a soft lighting effect. Your filter is going to be used in combination with your buffer size to try to find a good combination that has good performance and is smooth. I think I've put pretty much everything on PFC 13. I do not know much about these. I did some reading on it and I think it's just like how many times it applies basically. Not 100%, but you can also use your filter smooth to uh, smooth out all that stuff. In summary, your buffer size will affect performance and how clean the overall shadow looks. 
Your gradient length will determine in pixels the distance between your solid and your transparent shadow. Your filter is going to also smooth up and clean the transitions, as well as filter smooth will actually smooth up the filter. Alright, so speaking of shadows, let's go ahead and create an object that can cast a shadow. So to demonstrate this, we're going to have to load up two more sprite nodes. So we're going to bring up a sprite node, and I'm going to call it the background. And remember, these are only for demonstration. Um, these two do not need to be a child of your light 2D. So I'm going to bring up a, something I'm going to call background and another sprite we're going to call blockhead. Or blockhead, that's fine. Now, the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is create a background texture. Or load up a texture to use as the background. And as you can see here, I just loaded up a solid blue texture. And the light 2D is currently illuminating it. Um, I'm going to go in here and I can actually switch this. Probably was a bad idea to make these ch childs of this, so like I said, don't do that. So you can see the effect with the light on and the light off. And also, we can go ahead and play around with energy. It's something I skipped over. Um, energy is going to be the intensity of it. Um, very similar to how like brightness setting would uh, typically work on any type of light. Okay, so once we have that, now we're going to go ahead and move into shadows. So what I have here is... A uh, bockhead, which we're going to go ahead and assign a light occluder. And this is our node that casts shadows. So light occluders need shapes, and we're going to make a polygon shape for that. Um, we're going to go ahead and give this a basic texture so we can outline with our polygon so we visually see where our shadows are being cast from. Okay. So now that we have our object here, we're going to go ahead and click on light occluder. We're going to click on the occluder shape. And now we're going to go ahead and click on create points. Now we should just be able to outline our object. And once we close off the shape, we have our light occluder. Now we need to go ahead and set objects in the environment layer to cast shadows. We're going to go ahead and go back into our light TV. Another shadow. We have it on. and. Turns out that we already have that set. That's excellent, which is by default, like I said, you, that's typically a default bit value of one. Um, and now we can go ahead and drag our dude around and show you that what the shadow effect is. So now you can see the shadow being cast. We're gonna go ahead and increase this background image size so that we can really see. And we're gonna go ahead and also increase our light texture so that we can there we go. So now, you can see, we have a nice, decent little shadow being cast from here. It's going to emit from the center of the light source, and if you overlap that center, that will cause the light to completely disappear. Now, we're going to go ahead and tinker with our shadow values, so I can uh, demonstrate how it's going to affect the fidelity of your shadow. So if you go down here, and uh, we're going to go ahead and start with messing around with our gradient length, and let's go ahead and set that to 50 pixels. Now we have nothing. So let's set it down to 10 pixels. And now we have a nice little fade. Let's set it down to 3 pixels. Ah, uh, there we go. Now we can go ahead and apply an F13 filter. And let's move that filter out by 15. Oh, isn't that nice. And now you have a very nice little happy shadow. That's nice and smooth. And look how clean and nice and beautiful that looks. And you can go ahead and uh, continue to tinker and play with shadows from then on. And that should be all the knowledge you need to create dynamic lighting and shadows in any Godot uh, 2D game. That's been it for this edition of Godot Tutorial Blitz. Go ahead and subscribe if you found out something new and you thought this wasn't annoying and it was kind of cool. If you like that tutorial, go ahead and smash your computer monitor so that you can't ever watch another tutorial again. And after you do that, or before you do that, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Um, and then after you do that and you clean up the pieces of your computer monitor, be sure to send a picture of that to my Discord channel. Um, you find a link somewhere, probably on one of these videos. Anyway, until next time, uh, peace out.